Hey guys, it's Shaylee and welcome back. Today's video is going to be all about story outlines and whether or not you need to do one. Hi, hello, I'm writing a novel about zombies and if you want to support your girl on her journey or you're interested in anything covering zombies, writing, and other fun stuff, consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Now you've probably been told that you need to have a story outline for your novel and first off, let me tell you, no you don't. There are plenty of writers who don't use a story outline and just write and build the story as they go. These writers are called pantsers. So if you don't need an outline, then don't worry about it. And I know some writers are probably going to get annoyed by that, but it's an actual thing, it's the truth. If you don't need one, then you don't need one. However, story outlines can be a huge help later on once you're in the publishing process, whether you're self-publishing or you're going the traditional published route, or you're doing a hybrid of the two. Especially when you have to do something like a synopsis and a story outline lists all main plots, subplots, and ending. And if you don't know what a synopsis is or you're stumped writing one, then check out my video on my channel all about it. I'll try and put it up in the YouTube card thingy at the top of the screen that YouTube has. Now I do encourage having at least a basic story outline with just the main stuff that you need to know, the necessary, not really detailed, but like I want to have this written down so it's all organized. And this includes the following. The exposition the conflict or inciting incident, the rising action, the climax, the falling action, and the resolution. This is also called Freytag's Pyramid. Essentially, if you're a pantser and you don't like using an outline, but you want to have at least a basic one to refer to later on, then I suggest starting with this basic outline of Freytag's Pyramid. Now with the basic foundation laid down, let's get into the more complex stuff. First and foremost, I'm going to say if none of these work for you as a writer, that is okay. Do what works for you. I really struggled with how I wanted to outline my novel, but I eventually figured out what works for me, and it's going to be one of the methods that I talk about today. The timeline method. This is the method that I personally use and I, it works for me. Typically what this method does is it lists out an order of events by date. Main plot, subplot, any sort of important detail in between for your character's development. I even personally go as far as having a highlighting key system so I can determine what plot is what. Is this the main plot? Is it a subplot? Okay, it's a character development. This isn't really as important, but it's a necessary detail. That kind of stuff. Some people who use this method do it day to day, day by day, including time skips. That's what I do. I like to have everything listed down going by on a day to day basis, uh, important information, even if it's a time skip, what happens in between, that way I can write it in in the next chapter, and so on and so forth. Other people like to do it week by week or even month by month, depending on how long their story takes place, and have bullet points below each month stating what event occurs when and how it affects the character. And the timeline method that opens up a convenient way of doing your scene list. Only downside to this method that I personally experience is that it can get a bit messy and you might blend some main points with subplot point and uh, you gotta be really careful about it. But I am gonna show you a basic, small, mostly vague example of what a timeline story outline might look like. So let's say this novel takes place in a period of a week, seven days. Day 1. Hero's normal life is depicted, main antagonist is introduced, and conflict is made known. Day 2. The hero begins their search or investigation with more questions rather than answers. Maybe they meet some companions on the way and the situation is just a bit tense. Day 3. The hero is faced with more obstacles while searching for the answers to his questions. Maybe they fight minor antagonists and learn some about the boss bad guy. Day 4. The hero's investigation takes them to a dead end and they begin to question if they even have a shot in defeating the main villain. Maybe one of the other main characters comforts them and a romantic subplot blooms. Day 5. The hero fights another one of the main villain's minions and learns something terrible about their own past and they begin to spiral. Meanwhile, main villain takes advantage of the hero's moment of weakness and kidnaps the love interest. Day 6. 
The hero is forced to pull themselves together and push on to find and defeat the villain and save the love interest. Day 7. The hero confronts the villain, they fight, and the villain is inevitably defeated and peace has returned with the love interest and the hero living happily ever after. That's just a vague example. It's not really, you know, in-depth or complicated or anything like that. If you would like to see a more in-depth version and example of this kind of story outline, then comment it down below and I might do a future video on it, even featuring my own story outline. <laughs> the three-act story structure. This one uses the main foundation and structure that we were originally talking about. And to a lot of new writers, it can seem really intimidating. But it's not as scary once you actually understand it. The Three-act story structure consists of Act 1, the beginning and setup, Act 2, the middle and confrontation, Act 3, the end and resolution. Because I'd have to make an entire video on this one alone, if I want to actually be as concise as possible about it, uh, I might actually do that, but for now I'm going to give you guys a basic overview. Act 1 should include the following, your hook, the setup, the inciting incident, the build-up, the first plot point, and the first pitch point. Act 2 should include the following, pre-midpoint reactionary hero, the plot twist, post-midpoint action hero, second pinch point. Act 3 should include the following, supposed slash tease victory, disaster, dark moment or processing, recovery, climactic confrontation, the climax, and then the end and resolution. Like I said, this is just a basic overview and there are plenty of writers out there on YouTube and on other platforms that use this method and could probably explain it better than I could. But like I said, we're not going in depth today, I'm just giving you a basic overview of some methods that I know so you can test them out or see if you'd like to pursue them and look more into them. The plot point method. For this method, imagine your story outline going in a straight line. From the beginning, it should look like start inciting incident, plot point one, pinch point one, midpoint, pinch point two, dark moment, plot point three, the final battle, and the end. This method might work for you and your book and it might not, but you know, like I said, just do what works for you. The snowflake method. I actually really love this method, especially if you haven't even really started on an idea for your novel. This method allows you to build off previous steps to form your outline. It has six steps and we're going to go over them now. Write a one-sentence summary, a general understanding of what your story is about and where it will go. Turn it into a one-paragraph summary. Build off from your first sentence and add details until you have five full sentences. Build up the exposition and status quo, the inciting incident, the turning point, the moment your character is at their lowest in the struggle to climb back up, and the climax and resolution. Next, you're going to focus on basic character development. Identify their motivations and goals. The conflict that is keeping them from reaching that goal. The result of their character arc. Remember that inner and external conflicts will affect your character. Now, turn the one paragraph summary into a one page summary. Connect all the points and fill in some subplot and other details. Next, you are going to create character bibles. Create a one page profile for your main characters. And maybe a half page to a paragraph for your side character characters depending on their influence and importance. This is where you dive into your character's backstory. I actually have several character bibles and I plan to do a video about them specifically as, I've as I have already done a video about how to create your character. But you will be exploring their backstories in this step and getting an understanding of their motivation, past, family life, etc. Even giving your side characters this kind of rounded profile makes them feel like more than just a side character. After that you're going to write a four page synopsis and and scene list. Once again, if you don't know what a synopsis is or how to even go about writing one, I'll link my video to it down in the description below and a card should pop up in the top right uh, of the screen and as a link as well. But as you've been building on this one page summary, turning it into a synopsis will be easier than having to formulate a synopsis later on without what you've already made. Now that you've got your character profiles, you have loads more detail to add, add them while continuing plot and story to flesh out a full four page synopsis. Now that you have a full synopsis to reference, start on a scene list. 
This is probably one of my favorite story outlines and one I kind of wish I did, but I'm really glad I chose the path to do the timeline method like I originally decided. Those were some of the methods that I know and I like when it comes to making a story outline. If you know any more story outline methods, then feel free to drop them in the comments below. And like I said, I'm more than willing to do in-depth separate videos of each of these methods in, you know, in the future. I just wanted to give a basic overview of each and every single one that I personally know and like. And do keep in mind that just because no outlines work for you and you don't like doing an outline, that doesn't mean that you're a bad writer or anything like that. You're just a pantser. You you don't need an outline to write an entire story. But I hope that you found this video helpful and if you want to see any more writing videos from me then hit that like button and subscribe. I try really hard to upload every Monday, Wednesday, and occasionally Friday. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!